Healthy Living. My name is Cheryl McWilliams and I'm the hostess for today. With us in the studio is Dr. Timothy Howe, an internal medicine specialist at Parkview Adventist Medical Center, and his lovely wife, Lynn Howe, who has a master's degree in public health. Today, we're going to be talking about some new research that I find very interesting. Uh, we live in Maine. There's not a lot of sunshine in Maine during parts of the year, and what we're learning is that vitamin D is very, very important to our health, and perhaps many of us are not getting enough, and it's affecting our, our health. So um, I'm real anxious to learn about it and hear about it. Tell me about the importance of vitamin D. Why do we need it, and what happens if we don't get enough? Those are huge questions, and I, have been reading research about this for the last couple years, and it's amazing, the research that's coming out right now. In February, the New York Times was saying in an editorial that they were thinking that vitamin D would be the nutrient of this decade. And the reason for that is, is that research is coming out that cancer is very closely related to smaller levels of vitamin D in our nutrition and either are not getting enough sun. And we realize now that people in the Northeast, here in New England, as compared to people in the Southwest, mm -hmm. have 50% more incidence of cancers, which is really sobering. Really, and that cancer can, in some cases, be connected with vitamin D deficiency? Absolutely. And Low levels of vitamin D. And they found that when people had as much as a thousand international units of vitamin D in their diet, or either by sunshine, that their incidence of cancer was 80% more. I mean, when they had sufficient vitamin D, they had much less cancer. Okay, wow, very interesting. So you mentioned both vitamin D from the sun and vitamin D from nutrition. Tell me about the nutritional factors related to vitamin D. That's a good question. I think for many years we've thought that milk was an excellent source of vitamin D. The problem seems to be that there isn't a standard amount that you can expect to get from a vitamin D in your milk. There seems to be a more standard amount in orange juice, but in milk there's quite a significant um, difference. Variation. And variation from milk carton to milk carton. Mm -hmm. And so, but you, milk is probably not a primary and standard source of vitamin D. And also, even with one glass of milk, you're still getting far less than you would need on a daily basis. The other thing that's true about nutrition and milk and vitamin D is that fish has been an excellent source. Many people have considered fish as probably one of our best sources of vitamin D. But with fish, we have the farmed salmon mm -hmm. and we have the wild salmon. Right. And with wild salmon, you can have an excellent source of vitamin D. With farmed salmon, you may have even as small as one-fourth a percentage of really? the vitamin D. Why is that? That's because the wild salmon will be eating all of the the sea, the seafood that mm -hmm. actually has the vitamin D that's mm -hmm. formed in it, mm -hmm. whereas the farm salmon will be eating pellets. Oh. So their vitamin D levels are much lower, and so when we eat them, we're not getting that same excellent source of vitamin D okay. as you would have from the wild salmon. Okay. The other problem with fish is that, as we know here in Maine, is that we do have a significant problem with the mercury and yes. other toxins. Absolutely, absolutely. So how much vitamin D do we need? You mentioned 1,000 international units. Is that the goal or? That's an excellent question. And there's significant debate about the amounts of vitamin D we need. Some people are saying, yes, we do need at least 1,000 international units of vitamin D. Some people are encouraging supplementation for that reason because they're seeing the statistics are so strong that excellent vitamin D levels seem to protect us from many diseases. But a big concern is, is that some people are also realizing that with higher amounts of vitamin D supplementation, you could have a possible 
problem with toxicity. Hmm. We don't know exactly where that line is. Mm -hmm. So there's some different opinions on that. Mm -hmm. But that's one reason I believe that with sunshine, we have such an excellent source. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how much sun we get, the body is perfectly capable of turning that into activated vitamin D mm -hmm. that can use to protect us from so many diseases. We also always have to remember, though, that we have to be responsible to avoid getting a sunburn. Now tell me about the vitamin D as it relates to getting it from sunshine. We've been told for years to wear sunscreen. Um, does the sunscreen interfere with the body's ability to synthesize that vitamin D, or should we wear it, should we not, what should we do? <laughs> Absolutely, it's a really important question. And I grew up hearing the same thing, that how vital it was to always keep covered up and to keep sunscreen on all the time, mm -hmm. winter, spring, summer, and fall. But now we realize that sunscreen cuts out at least 98% if it's 15 SPF or higher wow. of vitamin D. And so we definitely need to get at least 15 minutes a day time out in the sunshine with no sunscreen. But after you've had good amounts of vitamin D, mm -hmm. then it's really important to put the sunscreen on because no one, no one wants to get a sunburn. Right. And of course we realize that sunburn is going to set us up to be at a higher risk for a variety of problems. Mm -hmm. So avoid sunburn, mm -hmm. but do get good amounts of sun every day. Mm -hmm. Now, is it the sunburn uh, received at earlier ages, which is more damaging, or older ages, or do, does it make a difference? I think that they do realize that for um, skin cancer, it is the sunburn before you're age 20 or 30 that is a significant risk factor for skin cancer. But even past those ages, sunburn is always a bad, a bad plan. Yeah. So I think to always avoid sunburn by after you've had a good amount of sun, mm -hmm. putting enough sunscreen on and a good amount mm -hmm. so that you, you know, a good healthy dose so you can rub it all mm -hmm. over if you're out in a mm -hmm. swimsuit or in mm -hmm. shorts so you can get excellent protection from the sun. Interesting. This is very interesting because I have a five-year-old and she's a wild little redhead with very <laughs> fair skin. And so right. what do I do? The moment she prepares to go outside, I'm slathering on the sunscreen. So what I, I hear you saying is that maybe I should let her play outside for a few minutes, certainly not to get burned, but to play outside for a little bit without the sunscreen and then put that sunscreen on and perhaps that would be healthier for her.